Hi guys, it's Dan from DansBestTech.com. Is the MSI Prestige 14 with the GTX 1650 Max-Q worth $1,200? A few weeks ago, I reviewed the Razor Blade Stealth of the GTX 1650, which was really the Max-Q version, and I said it was worth $1,800. But what if there's a newly released laptop with very similar specs available for the much more affordable price of $1,200? That's right. In this video, I'm reviewing the MSI Prestige 14 with the GTX 1650 Max-Q. Is it worth $1,200? And how does it compare to the Razor Blade Stealth with the GTX 1650 Max-Q? To me, it's a good laptop. It's lighter than the Stealth, even with the larger screen, and the price is way more affordable. But it feels cheaper and has thermal throttling right out of the box. Stay tuned for more on this. If you've been watching my videos, you know I don't like breaking the bank. That's why I'm reviewing the cheapest model that still includes the GTX 1650 Max-Q. Incidentally, I'm very happy that MSI correctly labels their GTX 1650 as the lower voltage Max-Q version. Therefore, I'm reviewing the Prestige 14 A10SC model. This is the model that comes with the GTX 1650 Max-Q. For $1200, you get the 10th generation Core i5 10 u processor, 16GB of RAM, 512GB of SSD storage, a 14-inch Full HD display at 1920 by 1080p resolution, and the GTX 1650 Max-Q GPU. You can pay $1,400 for the Core i7, or $1,700 for the Core i7, a 1TB SSD, and a 4K UHD IPS display. I don't recommend the i7 version, as the i5 processor will work just fine for most people, a 4K panel isn't worth it on a small 14-inch laptop, and the SSD is user-upgradable. Regarding the form, this Prestige 14's dimensions are 12.5 by 8.5 by 0.6 inches, and it weighs only 2.8 pounds. Compared to the Razorblade Stealth's 12-inch by 8-inch by 0.6-inch dimensions and 3.26 pounds, MSI somehow pulled off a laptop that's a little bit larger, but almost half a pound lighter for a fraction of the cost. So were there any sacrifices made? Actually, yes. MSI claims that the mineral white or carbon gray cases are made from sandblasted aluminum, but I'm questioning this. It feels like the back panel for the LCD screen is indeed aluminum, but the rest of the laptop case feels like plastic. You can feel significant flexing when pressing anywhere on the laptop surface. You hear creaks and pops when picking it up and simply resting your palms on the laptop. So I have to question the Prestige 14's durability over time. That said, this super light laptop should be ideal for a student or professional who wants the best in terms of weight and portability. The hinge is sturdy and raises the base of the laptop by half an inch from the surface, which should aid in ventilation and cooling. The display can open up to 180 degrees, and the logo on the back of the laptop is super subtle and great for school and office. Regarding the ports, the Prestige 14 has two USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports, one microSD card slot, two USB 3.0 Type-A ports, and a headphone jack. I love the Thunderbolt 3 ports, and I'm very happy that there is even an SD card slot. As for upgradability, you can upgrade the SSD on your own by simply removing the back cover. The Wi-Fi module and battery are also easily replaceable. The upgradability is nice since most small and light laptops have everything soldered to the motherboard. Apple. That said, there's a warranty sticker over one of the screws on the back panel. At first, I thought MSI didn't want you to upgrade the laptop yourself, but after reading forums online, it sounds like you should be able to upgrade the SSD yourself without forwarding the warranty if you know what you're doing and don't damage any of the internals during the process. Let me know in the comments below if this is something you would like to see or a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to upgrade the SSD. Regarding the speakers, they're quite tinny, they are not upward firing, and they don't get loud. I also got a Windows pop-up saying, your computer needs to restart to complete your Nahimic 3 installation. Do you want to restart now? What? Why wasn't the computer's audio software installed before the laptop shipped? No Windows, stop interrupting my workflow. I do not want to restart now. And that leads me to the question of what kind of bloatware, trialware, or adware is MSI shipping with this laptop. I woke up with a Norton antivirus pop-up one morning telling me that I have 60 days left of my free trial. I don't remember signing up for a free trial. Of course, there's the usual Microsoft Office free trial, but I don't think that's MSI's fault. Microsoft bakes that into every Windows install. Regardless, I recommend removing Norton antivirus at minimum or doing a fresh Windows install at best. Now let's talk about this display. 
The full HD screen included in the cheaper version is just fine for most people. It is factory calibrated to reproduce 100% of the Adobe gamut, has great color accuracy, it just doesn't get very bright. You can upgrade to the 4K 3840x2164K panel for photo or video editing, but unless you hold the screen an inch away from your face, you really won't be able to tell a difference. You won't be able to see any improvement on the 4K panel during gaming either, and the GTX 1650 Max-Q won't be able to drive games at the native resolution without a serious hit to performance. So yeah, I recommend to stick with a cheaper full HD 1080p screen. It just doesn't get very bright, but it works fine for most people. Moving to the keyboard, the typing experience on this keyboard is great. Finally, a laptop that isn't trying to innovate a new type of key that decreases key travel and increases initiation force? Mmm, Apple. Seriously, typing on this keyboard is a dream. It feels better than the Razorblade Stealth, the Alienware M15, and anything from Apple since 2016. The key fonts have been upgraded for a more professional design over previous models as well. It's weird, but in a good way. The key backlighting is super bright for working in dimly lit rooms. The shift key isn't separated from the question mark like on the Razorblade Stealth. And finally, the function keys are reversed so you have quick access to volume and screen brightness. I really like that as I couldn't reverse it on the Blade Stealth. The precision trackpad on this laptop feels good as well. I love the smooth, cool glass feel. It supports all of the Windows gestures. It even has a fingerprint sensor. If I were to rate the gold standard Apple trackpads a 10 out of 10, then this trackpad is definitely an 8. It passes the finger roll test. It feels tight and premium. It uses all of the available real estate below the keyboard without interfering with your palms while typing. Some might think that the trackpad won't have enough vertical travel for them, but this isn't true in my case. You can tell MSI took some time engineering a good trackpad, and it shows. It's just that precision trackpads still aren't as good as Apple trackpads yet. Finally, let's talk about what you've all been waiting for, the performance. So you're probably wondering how the processor and the graphics card perform in such a small and light laptop. The $1,200 variant is rocking the 10th generation Core i5-10210U processor along with the GTX 1650 Max-Q GPU. When comparing the i5 Prestige 14 to the cheaper MSI Modern with the M250X, the larger Prestige 15, and the Razorblade Stealth with the same GTX 1650 Max-Q, you can see that at first look, the Prestige 14 seems to perform perfectly fine. Its OpenCL score is more than three times stronger than the MX250 in the MSI Modern 14. With maxed out settings, Grand Theft Auto V ran with an average of 55 frames per second, Doom got around 60 frames per second, Tomb Raider benchmarked at 60 frames per second, and Witcher 3 averaged around 30 frames per second, but with some serious stutter. But leaving Witcher 3 running for 5 minutes caused the FPS to drop to 9. So I downloaded and ran Unigen Heaven with the settings at Ultra. 5 minutes in, the GPU temperatures had climbed to 74 degrees C. 10 minutes in, the FPS dropped to 11. So then I opened the Creator Center app MSI installed on the laptop for me. I changed the performance to Sport and the fan to Cooler Boost, and I started looking at the clock and memory frequencies in there. Man, this is a noisy laptop when the fans are on high. This time, the temps never climbed above 70 degrees C in Unigen Heaven, so I was feeling pretty good. But running Witcher 3 at max settings for 20 minutes, on the other hand, caused the FPS to again drop. Dialing back the settings in Witcher 3 from ultra to high, and then again from high to medium, still created this same thermal throttling issue. So what do I recommend? Should you simply not buy this laptop? Well, after a quick Google search, I came across a video linked in the description below. It explains how to undervolt the GPU using the program MSI Afterburner. After shifting the curve to approximately 1400 MHz for all voltages, the GPU temperature never climbed above 70 degrees C, and I was finally able to play Witcher 3 on ultra settings without any thermal throttling. The laptop feels hot, the fans do get, or sorry, the fan does get loud, but at least it's working consistently now. Additionally, my undervolt didn't hurt performance significantly in any of the games and benchmarks. I only got around 1 FPS drop. So now let's talk about the battery life. What kind of battery performance should you expect when you aren't gaming? You'd think that the gaming laptop would have miserable battery life, but that's not the case for the MSI Prestige 14. Running two looped videos with battery saver mode enabled, the screen brightness at 50% screen brightness, and the speakers at 50% volume, the laptop lasted 7 hours and 42 minutes. Not too shabby for a gaming laptop. So now let's talk about laptop alternatives. 
So is there a laptop that beats the MSI Prestige 14 with its GTX 1650 Max-Q? I really want to recommend the much more expensive Razer Blade Stealth with its GTX 1650 Max-Q. The build quality in that laptop feels much more premium, and the cooling is much better with the additional fan and heat pipes. It'll just cost you $1,800 rather than $1,200 for this one. Is it worth the extra $600 to you? Check out my video above. To me, if I wouldn't have found a workaround to the MSI Prestige 14's thermal throttling issue, I would have said that you have to go with the Razer Blade Stealth. But now that I've fixed this laptop's biggest issue, it's a toss-up. If you have an extra $600 lying around, the Razer Blade Stealth with a GTX 1650 Max-Q is great. Finally, can this laptop turn a MacBook user like other people into a prestige Windows user? Let me know what you think in the comments. Just like in my Razer Blade Stealth with the GTX 1650 Max-Q review, this laptop is very tempting since it gives you a much bigger bang for your buck. The GPU performance is significantly greater than the Apple options, the size and weight is superb, the keyboard typing experience is better, it has a greater variety of ports like USB Type-A and even a micro SD card slot. The only worst things are the trackpad, the noisy flexing, and the thermal throttling out of the box. But if you're a gamer, the Windows library of games is far superior. So if you want to game on a super thin and light laptop that also gets great battery life, get the MSI Prestige 14 or the Razer Blade Stealth. If you need Final Cut Pro, stick with a MacBook. In conclusion, should you buy the MSI Prestige 14 with the GTX 1650 Max-Q? If you want one of the cheapest, super light gaming laptops with a GTX 1650 Max-Q inside that can play most games in max settings, one that weighs only 2.8 pounds, one that has 16 gigabytes of RAM, one that has 512 gigabytes of SSD storage, one that has upgradable storage, one that has a great feeling keyboard, one that has a multitude of ports including Thunderbolt 3, USB-A, and micro SD card slots, one that costs $1,200 or $600 less than the Razer Blade Stealth with very similar specs, then the MSI Prestige 14 or the GTX 1650 Max-Q is for you. Just remember, the build quality and flexing is questionable, the trackpad isn't as great as MacBook alternatives. The sound is quiet and tinny. It comes with bloatware. The screen doesn't get as bright. And there is thermal throttling out of the box. So what do you think? Is this laptop worth it to you? Is it better than the $1,800 Razer Blade Stealth? And do you know of any better alternatives? Click like if you like this video. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to see more. And check out DansBestTech.com for a full written review.